Today, we're going to be taking a look at the Razorblade 15 inch 2020 base edition laptop. In this video, we'll be going over the features, the price, uses, real world performance in various games and situations, and reasons to buy or not to buy this laptop to allow you to see if this laptop fits your specific needs. So I've been in the market looking to replace my desktop machine with something more portable for a while now. Since I don't really game much anymore and my 2080 Ti in my desktop is overkill for my needs. We've owned a variety of different laptops over the years such as MSI, Asus and Alienware and they've all had various issues from overheating, slow performance to hinges that get damaged over time and they generally only lasted a year or two. I've always liked the look and the design of the Razorblade laptops, but I've never decided to give their laptops a try until now, mainly due to the Razor tax that you pay, which increases the price drastically. So let's take a look at the specs of this particular model. So my model here is a Mercury edition. It has an i7-10750 that runs at 2.6 gigahertz and boosts to five gigahertz. It has 16 giga DDR4 RAM and NVIDIA 2070 Mobile Max-Q, not the Super Edition. It has a 500 gig M2 SSD and an OLED screen, but they do make a version with a HD panel with 144 hertz refresh rate for the gamers. Overall, the specs of this laptop are pretty solid for gaming and content creation. And if you feel the need for a better CPU or graphics card, Razer has you covered with the higher end models that have an eight core CPU and a 28 Super graphics card. Port wise, on the left, you get Razer's proprietary charging port, an Ethernet jack, which is only available in the base edition, a standard USB port, a USB-C port, and a headphone jack. On the right side of the laptop, you get a Kensington lock, a full-sized HDMI slot, two standard USB ports, and a Thunderbolt 3 port, which can be used with docks and eGPU enclosures that support it, such as the Razer Core, which allow you to add a desktop graphics card to your laptop. So you do get a decent amount of I.O. with this laptop compared to other brands, which tends to substitute ports for laptop thinness, usually getting rid of the Ethernet port, and I hate that. So now let's go over some of the benchmarks we have. We decided to test a variety of different benchmarking software, such as Cinebench, 3D Mark, and games in 4K, HD, boost performance mode and non-boosted mode to get a good overall idea of how well this laptop can handle a variety of different tasks that Razer claims the laptop is capable of. We've also decided to throw in an old Asus laptop we had on hand that has a GeForce 1060 mobile and i7-8750 to add to the comparison. So first up, you can see that with Warcraft 3 Reforged, you can expect frame rates in the range of 127 to 153 from this laptop which by far defeats the 87 that the Asus provides, which is to be expected in a much newer laptop. However, in 4K, you can expect 62 to 74 frames per second, depending on if you are playing with boost mode enabled or not. Next up, we have the latest expansion in World of Warcraft, running at HD speeds where the Razer is only bringing in between 74 and 89 frames per second, and the Asus with its 1060 is getting 66. While I feel like this result is pretty low for only running the game at HD resolutions, this is still easily playable. However, once you move over to the 4K resolutions, you'll see your frame rates start to tank down to the 42 to 48 range, which is still playable. However, you might notice some frame drops here and there, depending on the different area you are in the game. So finally, for the game frame rate benchmark, we have Doom Eternal, which is a really well-optimized game, which is evident from the fact that you can expect to get between 110 to 128 frames per second on the Razer Blade 15 with the 2070, and even the Asus comes in with a respectable 78 frames per second, making this game run perfectly fine on both devices. Even when you're running Doom Eternal at 4K resolutions, the game is still easily playable with a frame rate range of 55 to 59, so you shouldn't see any frame drops at all realistically, which is great for 4K gaming. Next up, we have the Cinebench score between both laptops in both multi and single core tests. As you can see, boost mode made a huge difference here in the multi core test, adding a score increase of over a thousand points. So in the case of content creation, if you don't mind the increased fan noise, which honestly isn't that bad with this laptop, I would use boost mode for the increased performance and speed when exporting and rendering videos. As for the single core performance, I didn't really see any improvement at all 
which kind of makes sense considering that the clock speeds are pretty much the same whether you're using boost mode or not. Finally, we have our 3D Max scores and as expected, the Razer Blade annihilates the Asus laptop by almost double and is even further increased when you use boost mode. Now in regards to whether I think you should buy this laptop or not, I put together a list of things I like about this laptop and things I don't really like, which hopefully will help you make your own decision. So some reasons to buy this laptop. The OLED screen looks incredible. You get really good frame rates in HD gaming. And if you want to go up to 4K gaming, you just got to upgrade to the advanced edition with the stronger graphics card. The chassis and design of this laptop is incredible. Razer always does good in this department. You get great IO with this laptop for the size of it. And even in boost mode, this laptop really isn't that loud. So now let's go through some reasons why I don't think you should buy this laptop. It's very expensive, ranging from 1,000 to 3,000, depending on the specs you get. The 3,000 uh, series graphics cards are coming out this year, and Razer support is pretty terrible. So you gotta keep that in mind when you buy these things. Now in conclusion, I'm very happy with this laptop and my purpose, you know, it fits my purpose for light gaming and video and photo editing perfectly. And it allows me to be much more mobile rather than being stuck at my desk permanently. If you are looking at this laptop solely for gaming and you have a ton of cash burn hole in your pocket, I'd recommend either looking at the advanced edition with the 2080 or holding off for the 3000 series, which is most likely gonna be releasing in the next few months. I hope this video was helpful in making an informed decision. If you were considering purchasing a Razer Blade 15 2020, don't forget to give us a like. And if you'd like to see a future video from us, hit the subscribe button to keep up to date with our latest content. Links to both the basic and advanced editions of these laptops and the game showcase in this clip will be in the description below. Thank you for watching.